Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that often crosses the mind of anyone stepping into the gym for the first time. You know that moment when you walk into the weight room and see people who look like they've walked straight out of an action movie? Huge bodies, well-defined muscles, women with legs that are the envy of everyone. And you find yourself thinking, will I ever reach that level? How long will it take to transform like that? Will I start seeing results in a few months? Or will it require years of intense dedication? These are questions every beginner asks. And today, we're going to break them down. These doubts are super common. And the truth is that building muscle naturally requires patience, dedication, and above all, realism. We'll talk about how much muscle mass you can realistically gain, the limits of the human body without using external substances, and how far you can go by staying focused on your training and nutrition. We'll also explore how hypertrophy works, what really happens in your body when you train, and how time and consistency are crucial allies in this journey. Is it possible to achieve that impressive physique you admire so much naturally? We'll discuss realistic expectations versus what's shown on social media and how to design a workout plan that truly works for your body, respecting your pace and individual characteristics. But before we dive deep into this topic, I have a special request for you. If you enjoy the content I bring here and want to see this channel continue to grow, consider becoming a member. It's a simple way to support my work, it's affordable, and it makes a huge difference in producing new videos. Also, if you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button, give a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell. This way, you won't miss any new content and YouTube will understand that this type of video deserves to be shared with more people. So, without further ado, let's get into the video and see how far you can go with natural training. To address this topic, we can't avoid one word that sparks a lot of debate, genetics. Yes, genetics and genetic potential are crucial factors that directly influence your ability to gain muscle. Who hasn't seen that guy who's never been to the gym, but has a physique that makes you ask, do you train? And the answer is often surprising. No, I just play soccer on the weekends or even I don't like the gym. If this guy decides to join the gym, it seems like he starts seeing results instantly. He does a bench press and his chest seems to grow, does a leg press and his legs start to gain volume, almost like he's transforming into the Hulk. And then you wonder, why do some people seem to gain muscle so easily while others sweat it out, train hard and still struggle to put on a pound of muscle? It all comes down to genetic potential. And what is genetic potential? Research on genetics has shown that one of the main factors determining someone's ability to gain muscle is what we call hormonal receptors in muscle tissue. These receptors are crucial for how your body responds to testosterone, the primary hormone responsible for muscle growth. For those who don't know, testosterone is what makes us more muscular. This is why anabolic steroids, which are synthetic versions of this hormone, have such a powerful effect on muscle growth. They enhance the anabolic process, meaning they help muscle cells grow. But hold on, so far so good, right? Did you know that testosterone goes far beyond just making you muscular? This hormone is also vital for sexual health for both men and women. Testosterone regulates sexual desire and helps maintain muscle tissue quality preventing it from deteriorating over time. However, it's important to note that just because you produce a lot of testosterone doesn't automatically mean you'll have huge arms or be extremely strong. There's a common misconception. Producing more testosterone doesn't necessarily make you more muscular or strong. It depends on how your body responds to training and diet, as well as your genetic potential. So, genetics can be both an ally and a challenge. But understanding these factors is crucial for adjusting your expectations and creating a workout plan that truly works for you. Many people look at a naturally strong and muscular athlete and immediately think, this guy must produce a lot of testosterone, or he must be taking some powerful pre-hormonal or pro-hormonal supplements. His testosterone levels must be through the roof. But hold on, it's not quite like that. The truth is, it's not just the amount of testosterone that matters, but how well your body can utilize that hormone. And that's where hormonal receptors come into play, a key factor many people overlook. But before we dive into that, let's clear up a few points that might still be new to you. Imagine testosterone circulating through your body 
But in order for it to be effectively used, someone needs to grab that hormone and make sure it enters muscle cells. These arms that grab testosterone and allow it to be synthesized into muscles are what we call hormonal receptors. The more receptors you have in muscle tissue, the better your body can use testosterone to build muscle. So, if you have a large number of these receptors, you have a genetic advantage of a natural propensity to gain strength and muscle size. On the other hand, if you have fewer receptors, your genetics might not be as favorable and gaining muscle mass could be a bigger challenge. Now, you might be wondering, if I start using steroids or synthetic hormones, will that increase my receptors? The answer might be a bit discouraging. Steroid use can indeed increase the number of receptors, but only proportionally to what you already have. If you have few receptors, using steroids won't change much for you. Your body will make less use of these substances. However, if you already have many receptors, steroids can further enhance your gains, maximizing the benefits of each dose. This is why some people achieve impressive results with a small amount of steroids, while others might end up in the hospital with the same dose. It all comes down to receptors. If a person has few receptors in their muscle tissue, the hormone might end up binding to other organs, like the liver, which also has receptors for testosterone. This can lead to serious health issues, such as liver damage, because the hormone isn't being utilized where it should be, in the muscles. On the other hand, if you have many receptors in your muscle tissue, testosterone is almost entirely used for muscle growth, and you might see significant gains. Therefore, whether you're a natural athlete or someone using hormones, it's crucial to understand that it's not the amount of hormones you take that determines your results, but the number of receptors your body has to utilize those hormones. The more receptors you have, the better your results will be, and the safer the process will be. This knowledge can be the difference between maximizing your workouts and putting your health at unnecessary risk. If you have many hormonal receptors in your muscle tissue, your body can absorb and use large amounts of hormones without issues. This means that, theoretically, you could take higher doses of hormones without experiencing the negative side effects that someone with fewer receptors might encounter. However, if you have few receptors, you need to be cautious. Even a small amount of hormone can wreak havoc on your body. But let's clarify something important. A large amount of muscle mass almost always indicates a high concentration of receptors. It's almost impossible for a man weighing 110 kilograms, 242 pounds, not to have many receptors because large muscles require a higher amount of hormones to maintain. However, we're not talking about elite bodybuilders with 110 kilograms, 242 pounds of lean mass. We're talking about you who just started at the gym and is wondering how many kilograms, pounds of muscle you can gain in a year. Now that you understand the basics of hormonal receptors, it's easier to determine if your genetics are more favorable for becoming a muscular athlete or if you'll need to overcome genetic limitations. And here comes a common question. How can you tell if you have few or many hormonal receptors? The answer can be found in your first few months of training. If you're a natural athlete and after three or four months of training, you start to notice changes in muscle density and volume, that's a good sign. If after six months of training, your physique is already taking shape and people begin to notice the difference, that's even better. And if after a year of consistent training, your physique stands out among other natural gym goers, then you probably have a good number of hormonal receptors. These results, which start to appear gradually, are directly related to your number of receptors. People with more hormonal receptors tend to respond more quickly to training, building muscle more efficiently. Conversely, those with fewer receptors may find it harder to see the same results, even when training with the same intensity. Therefore, it's important to be patient and focused on your workouts respecting the limitations and possibilities of your body. If you naturally gain muscle mass easily, it indicates that your genetics are favorable and that you have a high number of hormonal receptors in your muscle tissue. Even with normal hormone levels circulating in your body, which range between 300 and 900 nanograms per deciliter of blood, your body is extremely efficient at capturing these hormones and using them to promote rapid and significant muscle growth. On the other hand, if you struggle to gain muscle mass even after months of intense training, proper nutrition, and dedication, it's possible that your genetic profile for hormonal receptors isn't the best. This doesn't mean you should give up, 
but rather that you'll need more patience and persistence to achieve your desired results. It's important to understand that science categorizes people based on their training response. Those with a high capacity for muscle gain and a large concentration of hormonal receptors are called high responders, HR. These individuals respond exceptionally well to training and achieve impressive results in less time. Conversely, those with a much lower capacity for muscle gain due to fewer hormonal receptors are called low responders, LR. For these individuals, the muscle building process is slower and requires a more patient and disciplined approach. The big question here is, can a low responder become a high responder? The answer is to some extent, yes, but it doesn't happen overnight. The key is to continue training and building muscle over time. The more muscle mass you develop, the greater the demand for hormonal receptors in your muscle tissue. In other words, by consistently training and gradually increasing your muscle mass, your body may begin to adapt to this new reality, increasing the number of receptors and consequently, improving your training response. However, this transformation is a gradual process. It doesn't happen instantly, but over years of dedicated training. So, if you're a low responder, don't be discouraged. With time, patience, and a smart approach to training and nutrition, you can overcome these genetic limitations and reach your goals. Low responders, or LRs, need to understand that the path to muscle gain is longer and requires patience. While a high responder, HR, can achieve significant results in a year, LRs might take twice as long to reach the same goals. Genetics is something we can't change, and fighting against it is futile. However, this doesn't mean the game is lost for those who weren't born with the best genetics. The secret lies in consistency, persistence, and hard work. Now let's get straight to the point everyone wants to know. How many kilograms, pounds, can a natural athlete gain in muscle mass per year? And for how long can this athlete maintain a rate of progress? Let's analyze the case of a high responder, an athlete with good genetics, adequate performance, consistent training, and a perfect diet. In the first year, this athlete can gain between 8 to 12 kilograms, 17 to 26 pounds, of muscle mass. In the second year, the gain drops to 4 to 6 kilograms, 9 to 13 pounds. By the third year, the average is 2 to 3 kilograms for 7 pounds. And in the fourth year, with much effort, they might only manage to gain 1 kilogram, 2 pounds. These numbers are based on the statistics of natural athletes I have tracked over the years. After four years, many of these athletes hit the dreaded plateau. The body simply doesn't want more muscle, and natural testosterone production reaches a point where it can only maintain the existing muscle mass. Gaining an additional kilogram, two pounds, of muscle after this phase becomes an immense battle. To achieve this gain, a Herculean effort is required. An intense off-season with a lot of eating, followed by a long pre-contest phase, gradually reducing food intake to avoid muscle loss. Additionally, supplementation must be heavy and well-planned, including vitamins, minerals, multivitamins, and other supplements to preserve every gram of muscle. For years, that's the critical period when many natural athletes reach the peak of their muscle growth. After this point, any additional gain is minimal and requires extraordinary dedication. So, what is your goal? If you aim to gain 14, 15, 16, or even 20 kilograms, 31, 33, 35, or even 44 pounds of muscle beyond your current weight, know that this is entirely possible as a natural athlete, but it will be a journey of years, not months. It all depends on how much muscle mass you want to add to your body, your goals, your training consistency, and above all, your willpower. Remember, the process is long, but every step taken with determination brings you closer to the physique of your dreams. Don't be discouraged by genetic limitations. Use them as fuel to train with even more focus and discipline. Now let's talk about low responders or LRs. Can an LR really gain muscle mass at the same rate as a high responder, HR? The answer is yes, they can gain muscle, but it will depend heavily on their genetics and body type. Typically, LRs achieve 50% to 70% of the gains compared to HRs. This means that while an HR might gain 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, in a year, an LR might gain between 5 to 7 kilograms, 11 to 15 pounds. 
But these numbers are not fixed. It all depends on how they conduct their training, their consistency, how often they can avoid mistakes, and most importantly, the focus and determination they show in the gym. In my view, a highly focused LR has more chances of success than a relaxed HR who doesn't take training seriously. I've seen many athletes with exceptional genetics, blessed by the gods of bodybuilding, be dramatically surpassed by determined LRs. Imagine an HR athlete with all the genetic advantages losing to a humble LR, who from the beginning seemed not to be cut out for bodybuilding. Perhaps genetics told them, man, bodybuilding isn't for you. Go play soccer or run marathons, because with this body, you won't get anywhere. But they didn't give up. They trained with dedication, built an incredible body, and put that lazy HR to shame. If you enjoyed this video and gained a better understanding of genetics, HRs, and LRs, and how they influence muscle gains in a natural athlete, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. I want to know your opinion. What do you think of this content and the training and nutrition methods discussed here? Do you think an LR following this approach could achieve results as good as an HR? Share your thoughts in the comments. I really want to hear what you think about it. And of course, don't forget to share this video with friends who need to understand more about this topic. Oh, and before you go, leave a like because it helps a lot with the channel's promotion and motivates me to keep bringing quality videos to you.